I call the Committee on Veterans Military Affairs and Pensions to order. Uh, we will operate as a subcommittee for a while. We're going to be, begin with Representative Griffiths, House Bill 1496. Representative, please begin when you are ready. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, member of the committee. I, uh, for the record, I am Representative Dave Griffith. I represent the 60th District, which is right here in Jefferson City. And I'm here to present to you House Bill 1496. Um, House Bill 1496 establishes the Operation Enduring Freedom, Opera Operation Freedoms and Sent Sentinel, and Operation Allies Refuge Program. Um, this particular bill uh, will award a medallion um, as well as uh, medals and certificates of appreciation to those uh, residents of Missouri that served um, their, 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 their country honorably. If they served between October the 7th of 2001 to August the 30th of 2021, and they were honor honorably discharged uh, from the military, they are eligible for this for this medal. Um, I might point out a couple of things. The the medals that we have, that we that we uh, offer to our, our veterans that have served, we have been doing this since World War One, World War One, World War Two, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, and now with the closure of the um, Afghan war, no matter how it ended. Um, those veterans that served in Afghanistan, they have earned the right to have this medal. Um, I can tell you on a personal note, when I received, uh, I really wasn't made aware of this until uh, about a year and a half ago that these medals were even available and when I started carrying this bill. And they encouraged me to, uh, to submit the paperwork for my own medal for the, from Vietnam. And um, I've been blessed in the six years that I've been here in the, in the House to receive uh, numerous awards and medals, but the day that this medal came, and I opened it up, and my mom, uh, my wife looked at that. She said, "David, this is one of the best that I've ever seen, and it's it's one that I have. I, I really display with pride, um, and it's really something that our Afghan veterans really deserve. Um, it's a priority for the Missouri Veterans Commission. Um, I have two priority bills uh, this in this for this session." The uh, veteran suicide bill was number one, and this medallion was number two. It came real close last year of, of, of getting it through the, the Senate, and it is my hope that this year that will happen. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, I'll be glad to answer any, any questions. Thank you, Representative Griffith, and thank you for your service. Are there any questions of the representative? No, thank you. Is there anyone here to testify in favor of House Bill 1496. Good afternoon. My name is Hallie Herbert. I'm the Legislative Director for the Department of Public Safety. Like what Representative Griffith said earlier, this was a legislative priority for us last year, and I just wanted to come and um, show our support for it to maybe cross the finish line this year. Thank you. Are there any questions of the witness? Thank you very much. Anyone else to testify in favor of the bill? Anyone testify in opposition? Informational purposes only. No one. Representative Griffith, any closing remarks? Yes, I just want to thank you all for hearing this bill and really getting it this far so early in, uh, in the second half of the session. Um, I really encourage support. I appreciate your support for these bills in the past. And I can assure you that they, my, my colleagues, my Vietnam veterans, my Afghan veterans in particular, the ones that I've reached out that reached out to me, um, are waiting for this, and they deserve it. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Representative Griffin. Okay. This time, we're going to have Matt. Would you please call the roll? Senators Black here. Gannon here. Bratton, Eigel, McCreary. Roberts? Here. Schroer? Here. We have a quorum. We're going to now move next to Senator May, Senate Bill 1504. Senator, please begin when you're ready.
Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. We need to get some more water. For the record, I'm Senator Carla May, representing the 4th Senatorial District. I'm here today to present Senate Bill 1504, which would modify contribution rates for the City of St. Louis Public School Retirement System. I will begin today with a brief explanation of what Senate Bill 1504 does. And there are also some witnesses here who will be available to take questions should they arise. Currently, the member contribution rates vary for employees based on their hired date. My legislation will maintain the current member rates with the potential for a lower member rate if the system's funded ratio is greater than 100%. Similarly, con employer contribution rates are set at 16% and decreased by half a percent until the rate is capped at 9%. My bill would set the rate at 14% with annual evaluation depending on the funding ratio, the funded ratio. Any modification of employer contribution rates would be, will be capped at 1% for any annual increase and 0.5% for any annual decrease. I choose to file this legislation because I believe it puts in place firm safe safeguards for thousands of retirees and current employees of the St. Louis Public School System. It is my hope that this legislation will open a more transparent line of dialogue between representatives of St. Louis Public Schools as well as the St. Louis Public School Retirement System. The relationship is essential to safeguarding retirement opportunities for thousands of St. Louis Public School employees. With this legislation, I hope both parties will be able to come to the table and work towards a solution that works best for our retirees. I'm happy to answer any questions from the committee. As I mentioned before, there are many witnesses here to testify that will be able to answer questions as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Thank you very much, Senator May, and thank you for working with us as we prepared to have the hearing. Is there any questions of the Senator at this time? Thank you. First witness in favor of Senate Bill 1504, please come forward, state your name, and please leave the witness form upon the desk. My name is Susan Kane, and I am the Executive Director of the Public School Retirement System of the City of St. Louis. Thanks, uh, thank you to the committee for taking the time to consider uh, Senate Bill 1504. Uh, Senate Bill 1504 is necessary to preserve the long-term viability of the system so that it continue to provide benefits to its members and its beneficiaries. Uh, just a little background on the system. It provides pension benefits to all personnel employed by St. Louis Public Schools and charter schools operating in the city of St. Louis. There are currently uh, over 13,800 members, and the system has a funding ratio of just 62.7%. The system has not been able to provide a cost of living adjustment to its nearly 4,300 retirees since 2006. The main issue uh, keeping uh, the funding at a lower level than is needed occurred back in 2017, and that's when the Missouri legislature uh, passed Senate Bill 62, which both decreased employer contributions coming in and increased uh, benefits going out. Under normal circumstances for a pension plan, the contribution rate would be determined by an actuary. Since 20 or after 2017, the system's employer contribution rate has been set by statute. In 2018, that rate started at 16%. And then after that, each year, it has decreased a half a percent and will continue to decrease until it reaches its cap of 9% in 2032. Uh, for calendar year 2023, that employer contribution rate was 13.5%. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, not only did uh, Senate Bill 62 decrease the employer contribution rate, it increased the benefits being paid out. 
And it did that by lowering the retirement eligibility from rule of 85 to rule of 80. So rule of 80 simply means that employees that when they have their age and credit of service equal 80, they're able to retire uh, with benefits. So this, this combination of decreasing money in and money increased money going out has materially affected the soundness of the system and its ability to provide uh, the promised benefits to its members and beneficiaries. And one of the most important factors uh, for a well-funded pension plan is the system receiving that full um, required contribution rate as determined by the actuary. Not paying that contribution rate doesn't make the need for those funds go away. It just simply means the problem gets worse over time and it's more difficult to resolve in the future. As a result of those legislative changes um, passed in 2017, the required contribution has not been made uh, as required by the actuary, and the system has lost over $30 million from 2018 to 2022. The market value funding ratio of the system has dropped to 62.7%, and in 2023, the Joint Committee on Public Employee Retirement placed the system on its watch list for the first time. So Senate Bill 1504 is looking to preserve the financial viability of the system on a long-term basis so that the system can continue to provide the benefits promised to its members, and those members worked as teachers, custodians, social workers, and uh, cafeteria workers. If the current law continues and no legislative fix is put in place, then the system is estimated to lose over $485 million through 2036. And that is even if the system meets its 7% assumed rate of return. If the system does not meet that 7% assumed rate of return, then the loss could be as much as $627 million. So right now, the system's portfolio is valued at around $841 million, just to put that into context. So SB 1504 looks to stabilize the funding uh, in a couple of ways. The first thing it would do was establish an employer contribution rate of 14% in 2025. And then that rate is a small increase from what it is currently and lower than the rate that was in place in 2018. After 2025, starting in 2026, then the employer contribution rate would be either the greater of the difference between 14% or the difference between that actuarially determined rate and the member contribution rate. So we understand that the schools, the schools that participate with the system do need stability in their budgeting. So under um, this legislation, uh, SB 1504, would stabilize the employer contribution. So an increase could not be more than 1% annually or decrease half a percent annually. The changes that are proposed here um, are not new to the legislature. Um, a similar bill uh, was passed back in 2018 for the Kansas City Public School Retirement System. They were under similar uh, contribution caps of 9% and their funding was also um, suffering, and then they were placed on the watch list in 2017. After that, uh, in 2018, uh, Senate Bill 892 was passed, and that alleviated those employer uh, contribution caps. So the language used back um, in, uh, for that Senate bill is similar as the foundation of Senate Bill um, 1504. So in closing, I know there's been a lot of data, a lot of numbers that I've uh, thrown out, a lot of information, but I wanted to just emphasize one very uh, important point. If SB 1504 is not passed, the system will continue to suffer financial harm, and that includes a funding ratio main, remaining in the 62% range um, through 2038. The system, again, is projected to lose over $485 million and that could grow to as much as $627 million through 2038. 
So this is on top of the approximately $30 million that the system has already lost from 2018 to 2022. So if Senate Bill 1504 is passed, the financial standing of the retirement system will greatly improve. The funded ratio of the system is expected to increase to 98.3% uh, in 2038. And the system will not lose between 485 and 627 million by 2038. If SB 1504 is not passed, the system may not be in a financial position to provide um, at any time for decades, perhaps, a cost of living adjustment to- Ma'am, I, I hate to uh, stop you at this point, but if I could get you, I, I just received a message that we're gonna have a hard stop at 1245. Okay. So if you could get uh, to a summary on your testimony at this point, we can move forward because we do have a couple more bills to hear as well, okay? Please, yeah, thank you. That was just, I was just wrapping up there basically to urge and um, say that the system does support passage of this legislation. And again, thank you all for your time and answer any questions that you have. Are there any questions? Thank you very much. Anyone else to testify in favor of this legislation? Again, if it's possible, try to uh, be concise and get through your testimony. I hate to do that to you. I know you've come a long way. Good afternoon. I'll just have a couple of brief remarks. Um, I, my name is Matt Kears. I represent the Public School Retirement System in the City of St. Louis. We do value uh, St. Louis Public Schools and the charter schools as partners with the retirement system. I do understand that there may be some opposition coming from St. Louis Public Schools uh, relating to a few issues. But I think just in general, we are more than willing to sit down and talk to them, to hear their concerns, uh, to see w what ways we can do to address their concerns. That's what we've been trying to do uh, for the last several months, but certainly we're willing to sit down and talk and try to see what ways we can address their concerns. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions of the witness? Thank you very much. Anyone else to testify in favor? Anyone in favor? Anyone else? In opposition? Please come forward. Please state your name and leave the witness form on the desk. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Matt Davis. I'm Vice President of the Board of Education of the City of St. Louis, St. Louis Public Schools. I'm also Chair of our Legislative and Advocacy Committee. Joining me today is the President of our Board, uh, Tony Cousins, and you also may know our registered lobbyist, Steve Carroll, will be available if you have any questions. Um, we're just uh, opposed to this specific bill mainly because we have not had a chance to review it and in particularly review the financials attached to it. We weren't, didn't receive the actual aerial report attached to this until uh, it was this Monday, and that actually wasn't even prepared until March 11th of this year. Um, uh, we do understand that there is going to be a need for adjustments to the legislation that was passed. Uh, that's due in, in also in large part because of the shrinking population of the city of St. Louis and uh, the declining number of participants in the plan. If we have less kids in our school systems, we're gonna have less teachers and custodians to pay into it. Uh, St. Louis and Kansas City have separate plans from the state plan because at a the time they were large growing metropolitan areas. At one point, the city of St. Louis public schools educated 100,000 students. We're down to about 17,000 students now, which plays into a part of us having a separate pension um, of how that becomes an issue. Uh, so we really are just asking for a delay on this to find a number that is going to be agreeable. Um, somewhere between 62% and 100% funding is probably the target that is going to be uh, doable for this uh, legislation. Uh, and again, as, as we mentioned, it's not just uh, St. Louis public schools, but about 30% are uh, also charter schools and 17 LEAs. Uh, I haven't had a chance to reach out to all 17 LEAs, but I did uh, discuss this with uh, Confluence, which is about the second largest charter school system, which is sponsored by the Board of Education. Uh, their statement was that they support our position uh, that there's an incredibly complicated undertaking that will impact the financial security of many educators in the city and that changes to these systems should be thoroughly and carefully considered and ask for additional time to study this with the idea that a bill could, uh, with joint support of SLPS and the charters can be introduced next year. Um, I do wanna point out just one thing. Uh, while there, there has not been a COLA available because of the funding mechanism, 
the St. Louis system is different from the PSRS system in that uh, the district and the employees do contribute to Social Security and that the retirees do receive Social Security. So they have received COLAs through that separate additional benefit. So I'm happy to ask any other questions, uh, but we really are just asking hopefully to put this on hold and we can come back jointly with the charters, the district, as well as uh, the pension plan, as well as the unions that are involved uh, and come back with a joint resolution for this next year. Um, yeah, I have one question, and I think I heard the answer. I'm just trying to make sure that I heard this. You, you talked about timeline that maybe the St. Louis Public Schools recognize that there's a problem and there needs to be time. Did you, did you state quite at the end of yours what that timeline, what you believe it may be? Well, our hope was that after session we can all get together and meet and come back with the next session and, and, and work with our representatives to come with a joint bill. You heard the testimony that the 62% funding is, is actuarially going to be there till 2038. So we're at the same level. And if you look at other pensions, you know, look at Moser's, for example, they've been hovering around 50%. And while that's an issue, they're still paying out benefits, um, and they will for some time. Um, so, you know, while legislative fixes are necessary, they're also very complicated. And when you're talking about not only the school district's budget, but also the budget of 17 other charter LEAs who have much slimmer margins uh, than the school district, some of them are very, very tight, not even having the appropriate fund balances. This could break them. Okay, so the answer, though, is a year, maybe. That we would come back next session with, them, with everyone on board as our hope. Okay. Is any other questions of the witness? No. Thank you very much. You. Anyone else to testify in opposition? No. Anyone for informational purposes only? Senator May, any closing remark? Well, I apologize, sir. Thank you to the chairman and all of you for your service. We appreciate you, and it's particularly Senator May. Um, my name is Byron Clemens. I'm a retiree of the St. Louis Public Schools, and I work for the American Federation of Teachers. I'm the retiree liaison, um, as well as the press spokesperson for the union. Um, I'm here for informational purposes, but I look at this bill as a great framework for discussion for all these parties to sit down and talk about this. This was suggested to us by the chair of the pension committee in the House that this might be the time to come together and figure this out. Um, we were there to testify for a stipend for our retirees because we can't afford in the system right now. And I have to say I was a trustee for two terms elected to that office and the person who sat next to me was from a charter school, Helen Lynch, who's a trustee on the pension fund at that time. People are calling me on a regular basis over COLAs or stipends or some kind of relief for the retirees, which has not come to pass because of SB 62. And it's interesting to me that the Kansas City School District, we've already mentioned this, there's PSRS, but on either side of the state we have unique systems that are different than the rest of the state. Um, Kansas City had a similar thing happened to their system which defunded it and SB 62 this is when the politically appointed SAB was in session we have an elected school board now and I will be brief but we're trying to fix what happened with SB 62 Kansas City fixed it you know that doesn't mean everything's been all roses and everything's fixed permanently but we're looking for that fix I think this could be a vehicle for discussion. I would hope we could do it sooner than next year. I, I hope that it could be the case. Um, and I'd be willing to take any questions. Thank you, sir. Sorry about your relatives. Um, <laughs> are there any questions of this witness? Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else for informational purposes only? Thank you. Senator May, closing remark. No, thank you. Thank you very much. That concludes the hearing on Senate Bill 1504. Now we're going to go next. Representative Shelting. Oh, okay. 
House Bill 1713. Please, when you're ready, begin. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Adam Schnelting, for the record, I represent Eastern St. Charles County in the Missouri House. Uh, presenting House Bill 1713, I'll be brief. I know that you're very time limited here today, Mr. Chair. Uh, currently, military, certain military income is tax-free in the state of Missouri. This legislation would uh, simply add military sign-on bonuses to the list of tax-free income. Um, there are certain benefits that uh, the military uses as, as recruiting tools. Uh, sign-on bonuses are one of those tools and from my experience often soldiers will use their sign-on bonus like for a down payment on a house or a new vehicle or to help pay for the cost to defray the cost for the birth of their first child uh, our soldiers make a great commitment and a great sacrifice this bill just aims to ensure that when they do receive their uh, bonus their sign-on bonus that it's not all taken in taxes I'll open up for any questions if you have any mr. chair Thank you, Representative, and I believe that's very similar to a bill that's been in the Senate as well. The language is similar. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Okay. Are there any questions of this representative? Thank you very much. Anyone to testify in favor? Anyone testify in opposition? Informational purposes only. Thank you very much, Representative. Okay, now, Representative Hovis, House Bill 2431. I hate to break the news to you, Representative, but uh, about seven minutes for everybody. Senator Black, Chairman, and other <laughs> members of the committee, thank you very much. Representative Barry Hovis, District 146, Cape Girardeau County. Um, some of these bills have already been heard. Uh, Senator Black did carry a version of this one that I'm bringing you with House Bill 2431. It deals with the loggers retirement system uh, some of the changes that they are asking to do on there is one change the makeup of their board this will give them the ability to do that by uh, taking one of the uh, members that's elected and then turning that into a retiree member uh, which is currently none of the retirees are represented on the board this would allow them to do that I'm gonna try to go this through, through this very quickly because I know there's someone else that may want to talk about this um, it also would uh, change the language to allow them to do some other things on here and I'm gonna try to go through those very quickly here um, it's going to change the, the requirements on the election of delegates used to under state statute they had to meet this will now give the board the ability to decide and this is from COVID where if there's some sort of thing that's preventing them to be able to bring all their members together at their annual conference that they could probably uh, set up some other standard to be able to have that meeting and elect their officials and do business uh, it's also going to cover parts in here with the consumer price index on how they set, uh, I guess, their colas for the retirees. That was uh, done under uh, CPI, one of the indexes. There's multiple indexes. It's going to let them standardize that. Uh, on the bill changes, it's on uh, transfer of member contributions from three years to ten years, and that's just falling under a current practice that they have under Section 70.690. Um, it also allows for certain deliberations on investments of financial records to be closed when divulging those discussions could jeopardize the ability of the board and their financial institutions to implement that decision. And basically right now under Sunshine, you can request what that is, but they want to be able to protect those where it may jeopardize that investment by a third party that wants to try to Sunshine that and find it out. This is the same uh, statute change we did for uh, the University of Missouri on their board last year that went through, so we copied that for some of our other uh, pension systems here that we have. Uh, it also deals with legacy plans. Loggers does take on legacy plans that are closed, and they will uh, handle those and uh, finish those out by making the payments as well as their investments. This is going to give them the opportunity uh, by this statute change to include those legacy plans into all the current investments. Obviously, there will be accounting issues there to keep them separate. We'll put it under one big pool for investment, which will help with, I think, their investment strategies because there will be a larger pool. Uh, this also includes uh, language I think you've already heard on the St. Louis police system. There were some uh, lawsuits where someone did not get promoted. They were paid out from the city of St. Louis, but then they turned around and went back to the pension board and said, okay, if we would have got promoted and would have got paid all this extra money, you should calculate that into the final average salary, which would have adjusted upward. The board itself has changed their policy and now that if you are one of those recipients of a payout because of an adverse reaction in a lawsuit, they'll give you the choice 
to be able to pay into the system because they're not getting any pay for that in the first place, could allow them to put it in there to take that benefit, or they can allow them not to take the benefit. This statute will allow them to be able to do that so that they are not, as a retirement system, uh, put under undue stress by having to pay out extra benefits where there was no money paid in for that. Uh, and that was sponsored by Senator Schroer, and I think you've already heard that. Just to be brief, if you have any questions for me, I'll be happy to answer them. But uh, that's what I have. Thank you, Representative. Any questions? Oh, thank you very much. You. Anyone testify in favor of 2431? Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Anyone else testify in favor? Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, for the record, Elizabeth Altoff with the Loggers Retirement System, just want to be on record in support of the provision specific to Chapter 70 um, regarding the modernization um, language for the Loggers um, System. Happy to take any questions. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Anyone else testify in favor? Anyone to testify opposed? Informational purposes only. Closing remarks. Thank you, members, for hearing this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I heard you say adjourn. You make that motion. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So move. Seconded. All in favor say aye. aye. We're adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you very much for meeting the time constraint.